Ladies and gentlemen and my fellow YouTubers, my name is Marvin Lopez. I am your host on the Lost Folklore Tapes podcast show. Now, I do want to start by mentioning that this is a podcast show first, so you obviously won't be seeing any video or anything like that or anything of that nature. The only thing you will be seeing and the only footage actually that you will be seeing are the links of each encounter that I have attached on the description down below on each specific video. So if you already listened to our podcast episodes, or if you haven't, if you're one of those persons that you'd rather listen to the podcast first, then watch the video, or if you want to watch the video first of the encounters and listen to the podcast after, that does not matter. Whatever you like, whatever the preference it is, just do it. I also do want to mention that if you do listen to podcasts on podcast players or podcast platforms, we are on a ton of them. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Also, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro, Castbox, and Podchaser. Please go follow us on social media as well. Twitter, we are at TLFT Podcast. That's short for the Lost Folklore Tapes Podcast. On Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon, you could go follow us at the Lost Folklore Tapes Podcast. Now, if you haven't mentioned this podcast to anybody, make sure you go mention it to the whole world. Go shout it out to the top of your lungs, run outside, yell it out. Say, go listen to the Lost Folklore Tapes podcast. It's awesome. Go tell your mom, your grandma, your grandpa, your great granny, everybody, your parents. Doesn't matter. Just go tell the whole world. And with that being said, let's dive into the unknown. Okay, the state police should be on their way in a few minutes. Is everyone still okay? Yeah, I think we're okay. What ran in front of you? A deer? I, I don't know what the hell it was, but it was big. It looked like a great big dog. I was standing up. Was it a bear, maybe? Maybe, I don't oh my God. Oh my God. Cleveland County 911. Hello. Can I help you? Yes. This is Tim Fugler. Uh-huh. Uh, you probably have my address. Yes, sir. What's going on now? I shined the light on this thing. Well, we're not shooting. Okay, what did it look like? It looks like a giant ape with a man's face. But... I was afraid to kill it, and it made a whistling sound. It was about nine, ten foot tall, with real long arms. Nine one one, what are you reporting? Uh, we got someone or something crawling around out here. Did you see what it was? Was it a person or an animal or? I can't tell. All I know is that my central light came on and I just happened to glimpse and see this thing running across the yard. A uh, good sized man or something it looks like a man. I don't know what it was, just that it, it ran across the yard. Okay. You've had problems in the neighborhood before? Yeah, my dog was killed here just recently. I don't know what it was, whatever it is, it's running. I couldn't catch it if I was going to chase it. So whatever it was, it was standing up. I'm out here looking through the window now and I don't see anything. I don't want to go outside. Jesus Christ, you better... Sure. See ya. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. Okay, hang on. He's right... Is he in your yard, sir? Yeah, God, he's big. Okay, what's he doing in your yard? He's looking at me. Oh, and the guy is on foot. This... I don't know what... It, it, it's, it's a big... Real big person. That's all I can say. Okay, but it is a it is a person. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it was a person, somebody really big. But he's all in black. He's... Is he a black male or a white male? Did you actually see whether, or was he just wearing black? He's all black and he's big. He is big. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Marvin, and thank you so much for listening to our first ever podcast episode on the Lost Folklore Tapes podcast. Before we get into the interesting content we do have lined up for you, ladies and gentlemen, I kind of do want to talk a little bit about myself. Now, I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to talk your ear off about myself. I'm just going to maybe say five or six little sentences. Um, and that is because we're obviously going to be hearing, well, not hearing about each other, but you guys are going to be hearing a lot about me and of me. And this might possibly become your favorite new podcast. So 
you know, it's best if you guys know a little bit about me. Um, and I'm also going to talk about why I kind of gravitated towards this genre of podcasts. Uh, two main big reasons, nothing crazy. And the most important part is I'm going to kind of break down what's going to happen and what's going to transpire on this podcast show from now on going forward. So my name is Marvin Lopez. I live in California. And two of the main reasons why I gravitated towards this genre was one, as growing up as a kid, I loved horror films. I loved it. I don't know why, I just loved it. I always thought there was something wrong for me loving horror films growing up as a kid. I was eight years old and I was already watching uh, Freddy vs. Jason or the Freddy movies or the sequels or, or the, the Jason sequels, basically. So, um, and I was not scared of them. I wasn't because I knew they weren't real, right? Growing up as a kid, you know they're not real. You know, maybe when you're four, three years old, it scares the crap out of you because it's this ugly ass monster. You don't know if it's real or not. But when you're a little bit older, you understand that it's not real. Um, I think my first ever horror film, though, was that Leprechaun movie. Do you guys remember that Leprechaun movie? It's where Je with uh, Jennifer Aniston. It was like in the nine. It came out in the 1990s, like early 1990s or mid 1990s, I believe. <laughs> so basically Jennifer Aniston moves in with her with her father into this broken down home in some rural area and they hire these painters to kind of renovate the house a little bit uh, unfortunately one of the painters little chubby guy runs into this crate in the basement and he hears this voice coming directly from the crate saying help me help me um, obviously he says you know let me help the guy it's probably a kid that's stuck in there. He tries to help, and then the fucking leprechaun breaks out of the crate and just starts going haywire. He starts killing people, hurting people, haunting people, scaring people. It's uh, To be honest, uh, my first ever horror film, I thought it was amazing. Uh, now that I look at it, it's a little bit cheesy, but it's still pretty good. Uh, and when you know when you have an actress like Jennifer Aniston, you know it's going to be a high budget film, so it's going to be pretty good. So it, it, up to this point, it, it's pretty good, and it's still good. Uh, and I, I believe that uh, it was a VHS cassette. That's how old that movie is. It came out in the what the early '90s, mid '90s, I believe. But that was my first ever film horror film. I'm sorry. Um, after that, I did watch the sequels of the Freddy movies and the sequels of the Jason movies. Um, and I love those as well. So when they collided in Freddy vs. Jason, that became, I think, maybe my ultimate favorite movie. My f my ultimate favorite movie after that. Just the fact that it's Jason versus Freddy, you know, clashing and, and you know, trying to get at each other. It's amazing. Um, but like I said, growing up as a kid, you know, you kind of figure that those creatures are not real. You know, and, and they're not going to do anything to you. So you obviously you care less. But... When I was in high school, the first time, that's the first time I heard of Bigfoot. I heard of him and, and Yeti. So I did my research on them and, I, and it was my professor talking about him saying that according to him, he had a friend that encountered Bigfoot. So I was like, who the hell is Bigfoot, right? So I go on, on the computer, do research. And after that, man, I was hooked. I was hooked on Bigfoot. After that, I was hooked on Yeti, uh, you know, werewolves, vampires, skinwalkers, all those good, interesting, cryptic creatures, unexplained phenomenon, UFOs even that, you know, maybe exist possibly exist because there is footage out there of these creatures but science does not want to own up and say you know hey these things exist so here you go the second reason why i got persuaded into starting my own podcast actually is listening to tony merkel the confessionals and Derek hayes monsters among us now if you guys haven't heard those podcasts make sure you guys go listen to them they're amazing they're awesome and i highly recommend them to anybody that are that are into cryptid creatures and unexplained phenomenon. That's basically the two main reasons why I fell in love with this genre and why I decided to make a podcast revolving around this genre. Now, let me explain and let me talk about the format of this podcast. Ultimately, I do want people to call in and explain and talk about their stories and I want to break it down with them just like Tony Merkel does in the confessionals because that's awesome, right? But the main format for this podcast is not going to be people calling in. Eventually, like I said, we're going to sprinkle that in. But 
This is going to be about tapes that are, you know, that are in the web, around the web, surfacing in the web, horror tapes, thriller tapes, anything scary on, you know, if there's unexplained phenomenon on the tapes, if there's cryptic creatures on the tape, we're going to bring them in here. We're going to convert that footage into mp3 and we're going to incorporate that into our podcast and we're going to break that down for you guys the viewers and the listeners when i say viewers is because you will be able to view the film you will be able to view the footage after or before the podcast so basically you'll be getting the live film the live footage of the encounter you will get the mp3 broken down version in my podcast and you'll get me explaining what happened in that film or footage so basically, I'm putting you in the shoes of the person that encountered the situation to begin with. Like I said, the reason I'm doing this is because it's always hard for me to kind of imagine, you know, when I listen to those um, podcast episodes or shows like Tony Merkel's uh, The Confessionals and Derek Hayes, The Monsters Among Us, I do listen to the, you know, obviously you're listening. The podcast is part of, it's obviously the main focus is to give you a story, right? To listen to it, not to visualize it, right? But we know that we want to visualize stuff. We want to see stuff too, right? And that's some things that we don't get with other podcasts in this genre. You know, you get people calling in, but it's kind of always hard for me, at least, to kind of imagine the encounter. So that's why I'm going to incorporate that. I'm going to incorporate the footage. That way, after you hear the mp3 version and after you hear me break it down you will also be you know enlightened and you also have the opportunity to view the footage on your own so you don't have to think hard and you don't have to think hard to imagine things it's going to be there for you that is the main goal for this podcast to make it easier for the listeners to imagine something to to see something to live it and that's what we're going to do so Without further ado, let's get started. This footage that you're about to listen to next is raw footage that was taken by a fisherman guide in a lodge, fishing lodge, in northern Saskatchewan on September the 9th. What happened was that this man kept hearing his dog barking and barking loudly at an animal that was in prey position between some trees. The man stepped outside and started walking towards the animal. He noticed that his dog was barking at it, so he decided to take out his phone. This is exactly what took place. If you've seen the video already before this you already know what i'm talking about if you haven't go check it out the link is down below on the podcast episode but basically when i look at this i look at it and i see a dire wolf there man a big black dire wolf that's the color of it literally when it gets out of prey position and just chases the dog it looks huge it looks like it's maybe six seven feet tall 150 maybe 180 i would even say 200 pounds it looks huge Dire wolves were known to roam places like Canada, some northern parts of the United States, and obviously the Yukon. Now, Saskatchewan is in the part, northern part of Saskatchewan. That's way out there, right? That's way out there. And Canada, if we know Canada, Canada's green. There's a lot of water. There's a lot of food, a lot of wildlife that could support creatures like these. Am I saying it's a dire wolf? No. Does it look like a dire wolf? Yes. Is it a possibility? Of course. But Canada, if there's anything that could survive in this world, it's in Canada. Like I said, there's a ton of wildlife they could eat, they could feast off of. But yes, I see a dire wolf, man. This thing is huge. When when it gets out of when it gets up out of prey position, literally, I was counting. I was trying to count like uh, like feet on the trees from going down from the bottom all the way up, and it literally looks up there like it's maybe five feet on its four legs. So can you imagine? when it's standing on its hind feet it's probably bigger than that maybe eight seven feet it's big it looks huge as a matter of fact let me t to try to give you guys a visual for a visual for right now have you guys seen that uh, that movie twilight 
when that one I, now, yeah I know you guys are going to scold me I haven't seen all the Twilight movies but basically that uh, that scene where Jacob turns into that werewolf or that wolf that's exactly what it looks like it looks huge it looks big it looks strong powerful it literally it makes the dog look like a chihuahua in my honest opinion this dog was hurt uh, I think it did make it but that's what happens when you provoke a creature that you don't know what it might do to you I mean this I'm pretty sure this this wolf could have could have killed this dog, could have torn him to shreds, to pieces, if it wasn't for the owner that yelled at it and ran away. Um, and dire wolves were known, like I said, to roam that area, Saskatchewan. So it could possibly be that, you know, a couple of them, maybe one or two, survived the extinction. Maybe had a couple puppies here and there, and these are the offsprings that are uh, that are you know haunting the areas nowadays in Saskatchewan or, or northern parts of Canada. But my uh, my my gut feeling is it's it's a dire wolf man it's a dire wolf I haven't seen a wolf that big and I've seen other footages on online that you know make these wolves look huge compared to gray wolves and right now I'm pretty sure the gray wolf is the biggest wolf out there but this thing looks like this this thing makes a gray wolf look like a like a little puppy a chihuahua but you be the judge about it um like I said the link will be down below on the podcast episode This next tape that you're about to listen to is also raw footage of a possible Bigfoot sighting in Central Oregon. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this. Basically, these group of teens are hanging out in this wooded area surrounded by big trees and tall grass. Next thing you know, they see this thing just walking across the tall grass. It keeps dunking and hits head into the tall grass and going up, dunking its head and going up, basically trying to hide. Now, while that's going on, these teens are yelling, saying it's Bigfoot, it's Yeti. And to be honest, it looks like it, it, it's a, it's a Bigfoot. It's bipedal, bipedal, whatever you want to say, however you want to call that. And it's just going across, minding its own business, dinking and dunking. I mean, to be honest, if I was in their position, I'd probably be scared shitless, but, uh, just take a listen. Oh, there it is. We've seen this thing before. Dude, what is that? It's fucking Yeti. I'm not kidding. That thing's, we've seen it multiple times. Oh my god, oh my god. It's coming over here. It's coming, it's coming over here. Go inside. Oh my god. Oh, it went, it went down again. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god, it's fucking Can someone get the flashlight? Go get the flashlight, Eric. Holy fuck. What the fuck is that? Nobody, everybody's inside. It's behind the bush again. Behind the ridge. That's gotta be what that sound is. A what? I can, my it's behind the bush over there. It was definitely on two legs. Yes, it was walking. It's right there. Oh, right yeah, there. I see it. Right Where? There. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you're on it right now. Right, right there. You see it right there? It's huge. You see it over there? Right there. You see it walking? Dude, that's on two legs. Watch it. Get the, can get the flashlight on it. Hey! Hey! Oh, that's a fucking great. Oh, my God! Someone's messing with us now. It's a person. They're messing with us. Dude, this isn't a game. Flashlight on. Eric, turn the flashlight on. If anything, Eric's playing a sick joke. Just like you. I, I, I don't know how many times somebody said that. Oh, it's getting down again. What the fuck? It looks like it's coming here. It's never been this close. It's never been this close. Come on. All right, time to go. Why don't you get those big That's not a person. They're like, where's the face? It's freaking hairy. 
Oh it could be easily just someone messing around in a ghillie suit. No one's here. Who's Something over there is making here. noise. Somebody. Is it your neighbor? Go check his house. We've checked this house after this every time. Matt, how many times oh, have we checked Tom's house? Tom's? Yeah. How many times he's have we checked? I thought he was here before. I forgot about that video. I completely forgot. My heart is pounding right now. It went down again. No, it's right there. Yeah, it stopped. No, it's walking. Oh, still. It's right. When I look at this video and when I see this video and I, I, I hear it, I literally think this is an authentic Bigfoot video. Let me tell you why. Now, this video takes place in Central Oregon, right? That's literally the heart of Bigfoot County. Bigfoot uh, sightings have been reported all throughout Washington, Spokane especially, and Oregon, the central part of Oregon as well, and some parts of Northern California like Humboldt and around there. When I look at it, man, this thing looks huge. It looks big. It looks strong. It looks powerful. It's walking in tall grass. Like I said, it's stinking and dunking its head. Now, the tall grass, when I look at it, it looks like it's maybe three and a half feet, four feet tall. And when uh, when I see that, that creature, that bipedal entity walking across that grass, there's still four and a half feet of possible Bigfoot sticking out of that tall grass. So that possibly puts it around the range of seven and a half, eight feet tall. When I look at its shoulders, its shoulders look like three, three and a half feet tall, uh, uh, three and a half feet across. Now, I've never met a person that has three, three and a half feet across shoulders from each other. Uh, that's, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, you got to be a powerful person to have that. And when I look at its head, it has that cone shaped head that a Bigfoot has. Now you're not able to see its features, but you're able to see how big it is, how broad it is and how big its head is. Um, the way it walks, it also has that big foot walk, you know, like it's kind of just like dragging its arms, you know, and, and, and kind of like moving its shoulders a little bit up and down. Uh, now, I'm not a Bigfoot expert, but by what I've seen and by the standards I've seen of uh, uh, that a Bigfoot has, this is exactly the correct characteristics of a Bigfoot. Um, the people also sound scared shitless. You do hear the guy saying it's probably a guy in a ghillie suit. That could possibly be the case. It could possibly be the case that there's a guy in a ghillie suit. But if there is a guy in a ghillie suit, these people had no idea. I mean, these people want to know what it is. They, they're calling at it. You know, they're yelling at it. One guy says, grab a flashlight. The other guy says, I'm going to shoot it. Should I shoot it? No, I'm not going to shoot it. So they know that it's something walking across their front yard, but they don't know what it is. And like I said, if it is somebody in a ghillie suit... They had no fucking idea it's someone in a ghillie suit. So other than that, I mean, I, man, I, th I think this is real 100%. Um, and another reason why is because the Patterson-Gimlin video was shot, what, in Oregon as well? So, I mean, I'm not saying that's, that's uh, proof that this is a Bigfoot. I'm just saying that, you know, there has been Bigfoot sightings around that area. Um, and another thing is, is that this is not the only tape that this family has released. There's two other tapes. So I'm going to look into those as well. But to this point, off of what I just saw and I heard, these people sound scaredless. I shit scaredless, I'm sorry. And that thing legit looks like a Bigfoot. But you guys be the judge. That, oh, there it is. We've seen this thing before. Dude, what is that? It's fucking Yeti. I'm not kidding. That thing's, we've seen it multiple times. Oh my God. It's coming over here. It's coming. It's coming over here. Go inside. Oh my god. Oh, it went, it went down again. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god, it's fucking big. Can someone get the flashlight? Go get the flashlight, Eric. Holy fuck. What the fuck is that? Nobody, everybody's inside. It's behind the bush again. That's gotta be what that sound is. What? I can, my it's behind the bush suck. over there. It was definitely on two legs. Yes, it was Isn't walking. It walking. Holy crap. Holy crap. Yeah, that spotlight. It's gonna pop up. Right? Yeah, turn that off. It's right there. Oh, right yeah, there. I see it. Where? Right there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you're on it right now. Right there. You see it right there? It's huge. See it over there? Right there. No, you see it right walking? There. Dude, that's on so two legs. legs. Watch it. Get the can get the flashlight on it. Hey! Hey! 
Oh, that's a fucking great. Oh my god! So much mess in your mouth. No, it's, it's a person. They're messing with us. No, dude, yeah. this isn't a game. No one's messing with us. Flashlight on. Eric, turn the flashlight on. If anything, Eric's playing a sick joke that on us. Just like she. I, I, I don't know how many times somebody has said that to me. I know. But oh, it's getting down again. What the fuck? It looks like it's coming here. It's never been this close. It's never been this close. Alright, time to go. Why don't you get those big That's not a person. They're like, where's the face? It's like it's sitting like this. It's freaking hairy. Oh my god. It could be easily just someone messing around in a ghillie suit. No one. No one's here. Oh, who's Something over there is making noise. Somebody. Is it your neighbor? Go check his house. We've checked this house after is every time. Matt, how many times it's have it's we checked Tom's house? Tom's? Yeah. How many times have we checked? I forgot that he was here before. I forgot about that video. I completely forgot. My heart is pounding right now. Do they want to get shot? Yeah, yeah, that's a person. You definitely don't have any rifles. No. It went down again. No, it's right there. Yeah, it stopped. No, it's walking. Oh, still, it's right what you're about to see in this footage, when you do look at it, now, it's going to scare the crap out of you. And I'll tell you why. Because you know it's not human. It does not look human. And it looks like it's from, from the pits of hell, to be honest. What happened in this footage is two YouTubers named Kazim and Munir... They're from Iraq, and they basically go around and they explore abandoned places that have the stigma of carrying entities that are not easily explained, such as ghosts, creatures of that sort, anything of the, you know, paranormal, they're there. So basically this night, that's exactly what happened. They went into this wooded area, and what they saw, man, shit, I mean, if I would have seen that, I don't think I would have been able to sleep for months. Just take a look, or actually take a listen. So what transpires in this film, in this footage, from Kazim and Munir, basically they're walking around this rugged terrain. It looks like a mountain of some sort, and they're surrounded by wooden trees, right? They're looking straight, they're walking, and they hear a noise to their left. They turn the camera immediately. And I literally thought it was going to be one of those, you know, tapes or footages where these people are just looking at something like a tree because they heard a noise and they're recording that and nothing comes out or nothing's shown, right? But no, they focus a little bit more and they zoom in a little bit and they see this black thing, legit jet black thing looking at them. Like he kind of like just this thing looked like it just kind of like showed his head a little bit from behind the tree and he's looking at them smiling. Now, while that's going on, they're praying, they're yelling, they're scared shitless, to be honest. In my honest opinion, if I was there, I'd probably be the same way now. I think this is real because they immediately start yelling, you know, they immediately start praying. They say, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, which means in the name of Allah means God, right? Basically, they're praying to God. They're saying, you know, help us because we ran into something that we shouldn't have ran into out here. Now, when I look at this thing, it legit looks like a demon in my eyes because it's just so pitch black and there's no way... There's no way in hell anything in this world should be that dark, okay? That black. It looked like the, the night. And when it's looking at them, it's just smiling, like like a, like a, like a smile, like, haha, I got you, you know? Like, like you can't get me, you know? I see you. And these guys are just praying. They're, they're scared, senseless. Now, another reason why I think this is real is because in Iraq, we know that's, that's ancient ground out there, right? A lot of a lot of things have come before before us now. There's a lot of history of of, of giants of of entities out there that can't be explained, right? That's why I think this is real because you just never know what you're gonna stumble upon. The ground is so ancient. Things have happened. There's been wars. There's been just things that have happened out there that 
haven't happened here and that's why I feel like they get that much paranormal activity they probably get even more paranormal activity out there because of that when you guys look at this uh, when you guys look at this footage look around the 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 entity it looks when I looked at it it looked like there was like a, like kind of not mist but like a, you know when it's really hot and you and you you put your head to the ground and you could see that like heat wave on the cement that's exactly what I see around the figure, around the silhouette of the figure. Like this heat just vibrating off of it or like this this something just vibrating off it. That's exactly what I see. Now, I personally wouldn't go out there, but I mean, these guys, man, that's their YouTube uh, channel. That's what it's all about and that's exactly what they do. But when you guys look at this footage, man, I mean, you guys are probably going to be scared shitless as well. <laughs> This next footage that you're about to listen to is also raw footage that I believe that comes from somewhere in the Middle East. Now, by the language and the, and the dialect that these two gentlemen are speaking, it does sound like it's a little bit of Arabic to me. There is some words in there that I could listen to and kind of pick up on. But basically, the whole point of this video is that these two gentlemen are seen in the dark, you know, and it, it looks like it's a desert kind of landscape plateau where they're uh, located. Now, I don't know exactly what country it is. I'm trying to still figure that out. But basically, like I said, these guys are trying to get away from this entity that's coming towards their car. Now, keep in mind, while they try to get away, these guys are in reverse, right? So the only thing you could see is that creature in the headlights just looking and coming directly at them. Just listen to the video. It is horrifying. Shove. دور 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 شايف غفله 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 When 
when I first saw this video, I literally thought it was a hoax, right? I literally thought it was somebody in a, in, in, in a white blanket with long hair over its face just playing a prank on these guys. But as I played it and replayed it more and more and more, I got a sense of, of it being real. Now, the reason why is because at the end, the guy, one of the guy, and I believe it's the guy that's recording, you could hear him crying basically, just crying because he's so scared. He doesn't know he doesn't know what this is. Right? I mean, if you're driving in, in the desert and you stumble upon a creature, an entity in white with long black hair over its face, I'm base I'm pretty sure you'd be acting the same way. I I would. That to be honest, I would. That's that's horrifying. Now, I feel like this is this is possibly a witch sighting. Now, let me explain. Their language, their native language sounds Arabic to me, right? And we already know that, you know, the Persian Empire was around that area, right? And we know of cases of witchcraft stemming from the Persian Empire. Is it a possibility that a witch might have, you know, survived through that? Maybe, or bloodlines after bloodlines and just passing down the gifts of, of witches, you know? And, and to me, that's what that's what it looks like it looks like a witch now when you see this thing at first you know it looks like it's minding its own business but the driver proceeds to provoke it he revs its engine at it he flashes his high beams low beams back and forth until it gets its attention now that's when that thing starts chasing these two guys and that's when the gentleman starts to cry and and pray and yell and at the end i don't know if you heard that yell but at the end this entity looks like it's it's done chasing them, right? So it, it proceeds to walk and kind of hides in the darkness. And this guy, the driver, proceeds to pick at it. So he goes again towards it and flashes his high beams, rev its engine, and you can hear a screech coming from the creature at the end. That right there, I drew the line there. That right there gave me the chills down my spine that I needed for the rest of the day, for the rest of the night, to be honest. It proceeds after them after that so the, the the entity yells and just chases them full speed and these guys just hit it on reverse put it on drive and just sped out of there now in places like these and like i told you earlier um like i said earlier in the in that video with with that demon that uh munir and kazim see in, in iraq i'm sorry basically i feel like this is a witch that has lived you know through through the years or maybe possibly an ans you know an ancestor obviously passed down the, the witchcraft and the bloodline whatever i don't know how that thing works but something or, or, or something survived right and maybe this is it we're seeing it um i would not want to be stuck out there around that time of night and stumble upon something like that because Man, I mean, I'm pretty brave, but I don't think I'm that brave. Um, but I, I can't wait for you guys to listen to the uh, to listen to the footage again and, and we'll finally watch the tape so you guys can know what I'm talking about.
готово. Зарвырс, зарвырс. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And it was a pleasure of mine to host you guys here on the Lost Folklore Tapes podcast. Can't believe it's our first ever episode, but it's going to be a first of many. I do also want to mention that we are on Patreon and our handle for Patreon is Lost Folklore Tapes. Once again, it's Lost Folklore Tapes. We are going to make a Twitter. We are going to make a Facebook and we are going to make an Instagram so we could all, you know, mingle and talk there and obviously i could share stories and short short uh, share videos with you guys and all that good stuff um another thing i do want to mention is that we are uh we actually do have an email as well i'm sorry our email is the lost folklore tapes um at gmail.com now one thing i was going to mention about that is that if you guys do have any tapes any tapes that you know have unexplained phenomenon you know creatures cryptic creatures entities of the unexplained and if you guys are willing to share those videos with me, I will do the same thing with them as I did with these previous videos. If you guys allow me to receive those and turn them into an MP3, I could plug them in into the podcast and I could give you guys a shout out. So basically what I did to today's videos, I could do to your videos. I will mention you guys. I will shout you guys out. And that's to keep, you know, the podcast fresh and moving forward with new content every single episode. Um, but that's going to be it, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Once again, I really appreciate it. And we're going to drop another podcast episode next Tuesday. So stay tuned.